industrialized world. The large scale generation of electric power distributed to homes, businesses, and factories across cities, states, and countries. Imagine how many jobs that created. And yes, we owe much of it to Thomas Edison, who built the first commercial power station not far from here in New York City. So can Barack Obama change the world with green energy? Another country has already tried. Think about what's happening in countries like Spain. There's a model for President Obama's plan to transform America's economy. Spain. Spain. What Spain's doing. It is true that Spain was the world's leader in the effort to build a green economy with the help of massive public subsidies. The Spanish government sold it to the public by saying it would create much-needed jobs. And then they claimed it was working. But this man says it was nothing but lies. Gabriel Calzón is a Spanish economics professor who authored a study on the impact of Spain's green energy policies on its economy. Calzada found for every new green job created, Spain lost 2.2 non-green jobs. And Calzada pointedly challenged President Obama's belief that renewable energy can create millions of additional jobs. Calzada concluded Spain's experience proved Obama's theory was flat out wrong. This is a Ponzi scheme, a perfect Ponzi scheme. I try to warn uh, that the experience of Spain is a sort of cautionary tale. A cautionary tale the Obama administration dismissed. Then White House spokesman Robert Gibbs told Fox's Wendell Golan that Spain's green technology must work, otherwise the U.S. wouldn't be buying so much of it. A Spanish professor <laughs> specifically warns the president not to try and follow Spain's example. It seems weird that we're importing wind turbine parts from Spain in order to build, uh, to meet renewable energy demand here, if that were even remotely the case. Is that a, a suggestion that his study is simply flat wrong? I haven't read the study, uh, but I think yes. Then in August 2009, a laboratory of the DOE issued this six-page response to Calzada. The authors conceded that energy policy has always been a politically charged subject, while concluding that Calzada's calculations of the precise number of jobs lost were flawed. When you don't like the message, you shoot the messenger. At the time, Congressman James Sensenbrenner was the ranking member of the Select Committee for Energy Independence and Global Warming. In your opinion, what was the point of the Obama administration rebuttal? To denigrate the credentials and the scientific study that Professor Calzada did. No doubt in your mind. None at all. Professor Calzada's study questions the effectiveness... In of September 2009, Sensenbrenner invited Calzada to testify before the committee. Calzada repeated his warning that subsidizing renewable green energy does not create more jobs. I'm sure that Spain uh, has many economic good things to show your country, but this uh, policy related to renewables specifically is not one of them. Democrats, in turn, hammered him with the Department of Energy report. They have concluded that your research was not um, necessarily the gold standard on evaluating this issue, and, and we're going to be following their conclusions. They're going to be moving forward with this. As the Obama administration was rejecting Calzada's mm -hmm. findings, his own government was concluding he was right. In February 2011, Spain severely curtailed green economy subsidies. We were destroying jobs. We were creating more debt. The Spanish government was at the verge of collapse uh, because of this system. Has the president stopped referencing Spain? Of course he stopped referencing Spain because uh, Spain uh, is an economic basket case. The reason this hasn't caught on is because it's much more expensive to generate this kind of electricity when you put in all of the capital costs and the subsidies. Well, here's the administration argument, that the market won't be established with li without some help from the government. So they say, give it a bump, let the market establish itself, and then it takes off. Well, how many bumps do they need? Which brings us back to the Solyndra saga. On Thursday night, the GOP-controlled House voted to end the Department of Energy program that issued loan guarantees to Solyndra and other green energy companies. The Senate can still block the cut. 
Hell yes, we took that money back. That turned Friday's hearing into something more than an inquiry into one bankrupt company and one disastrous loan. I think it is important that we don't throw the baby out with the bathwater. Both sides agreed their work was a long way from being over. Uh, as the hearing showed, we're not done. The green job story isn't simply about a bad investment here, a beltway scandal there. It's about the role of government and the use of public dollars to influence private markets. President Obama is committed to spending your money to boost industries and technologies that have not gained traction on their own. He says that America's financial future depends on it, and the planet too. His critics believe that no group of White House advisors or government bureaucrats, no matter how smart or enlightened, can create real self-sustaining jobs. They say when government second-guesses the wisdom of 300 million Americans in the marketplace, it leads to crony capitalism at best and economic disaster at worst. As the debate continues, so does the spending. Neither can go on much longer.